I would like to answer a few questions that I was asked on the YouTube channel, on social media, Discord. The one question was, how is it possible that the cube actually fits on the VZBot top plate without touching the X axis? So I quickly set up a little test rig, nine millimeter or MGN nine with the H carriage where I mounted the, the top plate to it. And then I mounted the adapter, which I introduced yesterday to the top plate with the cube connected to it. And then moving, I don't think you can hear it, but we can see that there's no scratches and it moves freely. There, there's no resistance. It's not touching any way. If I turn the X axis to the side, it's a millimeter. It's really a millimeter space that we have at the back um, where it doesn't touch. So it is a very tight fit, but it, it does fit. I hope I was able to answer that, that question. Second question was, why am I only using two mounting screws? Because the original cube comes with six mounting screws, which of course best would be to mount four of them. The problem is the licensing agreement on this top plate is Simon Bess's design. He would be the one that has to change the layout of the top plate to be able to add more screws. I would be very interested in your thoughts. Looking at this now, my first idea would be these holes here are all 2.5 millimeters, which is the perfect size to actually thread in um, three millimeters. So to cut in a three millimeter thread in there. And if we use the back ones, which there's definitely what I can see more than enough space, we can add two more screws from the back. But again, is that necessary? The Goliath only gets mounted with two screws. Um, people sometimes complain that there's a wobble. I don't see a wobble here because the plate is actually a lot bigger than what the Goliath one is. And it, uh, it covers really from over the front all the way back. So this whole section here is one big plate. And I don't see how this is going to move. But that would be an option which you could comment on. The other question was that I would like to answer, how is this even possible that this fitted? Because I'm not the only person that can do CAD. There are other people that, that create awesome designs, awesome modifications. And I, or the, the answer to that is, I did not try to adapt the cube to the top plate, but I actually created a new adapter so that it would work. And looking in the front, if you look at this front view and you look at the photos online of the cube, or if you have a cube at home and you would unbox it, you would see there is something different here. It doesn't look like the one that you just unpacked out of the box. The one reason is this titanium tube that protects the hot end got span 180 degrees. The problem is, if I turn this around and we look at the back, this section here, the bottom plate where you have your, your duct connected to, that would actually touch if this section would be straight. So I was forced to turn this around so that we have clearance at the bottom where the bottom plate is so that it can move freely. And I posted some pictures this morning on Facebook. I will blend them in um, this, uh, this video so that you guys can see that there is actually space available there. I think this hole is um, there for the, for the air-cooled version. I haven't looked into the air-cooled version because I don't have one myself here to, to actually play around with it. There has been, or one of my questions yesterday was, would you like an air-cooled version? And here I already see a potential problem. 
getting the fan up here, mounted maybe up here. I will have to look how that would be possible. But the main thing is that is how I did it. I did not adapt anything. I created a new plate. And because I turned this by 180 degrees, the top screw or the front screw, if you look in your original cube, is actually now in the back. And the two on the 60 degree of that is now mounted on the side. And that's how I was able to actually achieve this mod that it would fit onto the VZBot toolet. I hope I was able to answer those questions. If not, then please leave comments below and I will try and answer them for you. Now, the next big question is we can see, and this is a 20 by 20 profile. So anything 20 by 20 that you have mounted on your printer will work with this top plate or this, this adapter plate for the cube. Now, the other question, which I can't answer right now, would be, does this also work on a carbon fiber uh, axis, x-axis? So as discussed, I mounted the uh, carbon fiber um, or the, the rail, the MGN9 rail H carriage that was in the first part of the video, now onto a um, carbon fiber x-axis. And again, I think that should show that it's not touching anyway. Okay, so it moves freely there as well. I've got no resistance for it to actually move. So also on the carbon fiber tube that we know is a little, little bit bigger. Also here, the, the adapter plate is working perfectly. So one of the questions that I was asked is, isn't the um, hot end now too close to the carbon fiber and will actually start burning the, the carbon fiber? Through spinning and modifying the, the adapter plate and turning the heating the heater cartridge to the front of the uh, tool head, we created this huge gap. And I don't know if you can see it in between here, but there's a huge gap in there. I would say eight to 10 millimeter gap where the heat, of course, is going to be generated, but it's not too close to the carbon fiber x-axis that it will start damage, damaging it. Or, um, or creating bubbles or anything if it stands there for a long time. And um, yeah, so that is the updates. Please, if you have any other questions concerning the adapter plate or things that you're not, un that you're not sure about if it's gonna work, then please leave comments below. You can also get hold of me on social media where I will try and answer them with photos. And if necessary, I'll also make a third video about it. A, a question that I got as well, what about the filament cutter on the cube? Um, something for multicolor, I would personally not consider um, because of the long perch or the amount of perch you would have to, to use to get the next color in on the, in the right color. But the question wasn't that. I mean, the question was, is it possible to mount it? Yes, the two of them fit together. So I was definitely able to mount it on. But now that the uh, cube is extended, I think this um, cutter has got a top plate of five or six millimeters so that it is lower. I can definitely feel very light binding. And I don't know if I run it up and down a few times, if you can see it over here, you can see that line. It's very smooth. I mean, it's, but definitely I can feel it. It's, it's not scraping it. It's hard to explain. It's like they are, they, it's there. It, the touch is there, but it's, it's not scraping it. So again, you can see that line that forms, that is busy forming there, but it's still smooth. Uh, the, the varnish on the carbon fiber part is not getting hurt. Will it work on this axis? And the answer is yes, it's smooth. Again, there is minimum space at the back, like really a millimeter, but it, it moves. It's not binding. It's not touching the, the aluminum. Um, and at the top view, I mean, the filament cutter would, would work. 
if this is the first video you've seen about the cube adapter, please have a look at the first video that I posted. There's a lot more information about the adapter in the first video. These were just questions answered. Um, I'll link it up in the video somewhere at the top. So if you are interested in it, then have a look at that video as well. And for all the new people on the channel, thank you for watching till the end of this video. And um, the channel can really benefit from a like or maybe even a subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much and speak to you in the next video.